What's up everybody, my name is Wreck-It Bob, and welcome back to Clippery Kissel Guardians. So, today we're going to be talking about Colossus. So, you just watched me be 12F, but we're going to go in, and we're just going to kind of look at my team a little bit. I have Windwalker, Pharaoh, the Flame Mantis, why can't I ever think of his name? Oh my gosh, okay. Then we also have the Druid and then Popo. Why am I using Popo? Well, same reason as if you saw my Colossus B10 video, uh, I have better runes on Popo. I don't put as much time into the mine anymore since I got Popo because they pretty much do the same thing. Except one does bleeds, one does poisons. It doesn't really matter. So that's kind of just why I go with him instead. But we're just going to go in and I'm going to kind of show you guys my approach to this if I'm like actively watching. So in the first stage, the first stage is really only a problem if you have multiple orc warriors because they do a ton of nuke damage. And for me, they will always target my Windwalker, who is not built for dungeons. My Windwalker is definitely built for arena play. So she's not super tanky at all, but she's incredibly fast. So it's mostly a problem to her because the Orc, Warrior, Orc Warriors will almost always target her and then kill her. But if you can get rid of the Orc Warriors, the first stage isn't really a problem. Not, not with this team, anyway. So... This generally takes a while depending on how well the bleeds are landing from Popo. If it takes a little bit too long, I'm sorry. Uh, this isn't my normal team that I would use. This is just a little bit more beginner friendly of a team. Like I said, if you swapped Popo out, you wouldn't be using any five stars. And if you play the game for any longer than, I don't know, a month, you'll have every four star in the game. It's, that's not even like up for debate. Like I have, I've probably gotten 10 copies of each four star at this point. Like that's just how good the summoning rates of this game are. Sorry for a little bit of this is gonna be uh, me not talking and us kind of just watching this. Okay, so second stage, if you're having trouble with this second stage, what I'd recommend is target one of these two on the right or left first and then you know go one kill the other and then target the center that's what's going to make it run a little bit easier but if you kind of look at how dangerous each stage is this one is kind of like almost like the break stage like i will always target uh the center golem simply because this stage doesn't pose a threat to me like, I have fast enough units that whatever damage they deal, I'm gonna just be able to heal it immediately right after. Yeah. So in this one, pretty simple, just stay targeting the Colossus. Now, I can't say how efficient this current team is because I don't have my good runes on them. So, I've had it win twice in a row before, like, well you just watched me beat it right before this, but I've had this team beat it twice in a row since I just kind of threw this together a couple of minutes ago. I've had them beat it twice in a row, so hopefully they can do that again. Uh, the main thing is I don't have good enough hit on my Pharaoh, and honestly, hopefully it's not so much as hit, he just needs more skill ups. Because he only has like, I think, three or four skill ups into him. He needs plenty more for for him to be able to, to to really speed this team up. When he is actually landing his stuff though, he does very well. Okay, so you can see right there, I even had defense breaks on two of my units, and he unleashed his thing and it was just fine because he had, I think an attack break, and I don't think he had his attack buff yet. So, you can beat these pretty easily depending on your room quality. If you don't have good enough room quality, you honestly just need the correct heroes for this. So like I said, this is not my, this is not my traditional team that I take into Colossus. My traditional team is almost all five stars and then, sorry, it's three five stars and then the Druid and the Windwalker. But if I showed you that, I, I, I'd basically just be telling you, like, oh, spend your money until you get five stars. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, please. Hey, that was actually a decently fast run. Okay. So now we're gonna, now we're gonna go in, wow, that is 
destroying my eardrums. So why is my camera like going like five frames a second? I'll have to fix that later. Okay, but we're gonna kind of go in, check out the heroes, and I'm gonna go through and just kind of show you guys each hero and like what they're used for. So the druid. Druid is one of the staples in almost any dungeon team, any beginner dungeon team I should say. Uh, if you haven't built the druid, definitely do it. He is one, of, if not the best four star in the game. So on his, on his first skill he has a cleanse. That's really good because the Colossus boss, one of the towers, puts a three turn attack buff on him. So if you're not able to cleanse that off, he's just constantly going to be sitting there having that on him. So his first skill is really good to cleanse that off. And he's still... He still needs skill ups? What? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, let's see. The Thorn Guardian. So this increases your defense for two turns and grants you counter for one turn, and it's on a four turn cooldown. Well, if you sit and think about it, that's not that good. You really only have defense up half the time and then a counter up a quarter of the time, but if you're countering it with a turn cycling unit, such as your Windwalker, which you should pretty much always be doing with the Druid, um, if you're doing that, you won't have to worry about having it down as much, because you're constantly going to be turn cycling, you're going to have his healing, you're going to have his defense buff, you're going to have all these different things. Or you could combo him with uh, a unit that decreases cooldowns or increases the duration of beneficial effects. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with him. Uh, I tend to just stick with my Windwalker though, simply because I have a decent Windwalker, even though it's not built for dungeons. Okay, so the next unit is actually is my Windwalker. Next one is my Windwalker. So your Windwalker is a turn cycling machine. That is what the Windwalker is for. So first skill, we have a slow on the target, which is good because then the keeps the boss from attacking as many times. Second skill is heal. You can switch it to her other skill, which is Gale, which restores a little bit of HP and then essentially puts them puts that hero next in the turn order. But I have actually seen that Chinook works better in dungeons. So that's why I have Chinook on there. Plus I need a little bit of healing anyway. Uh, Wind's Blessing just boosts uh, everyone's energy by 30% and haste them for three turns and it's on three turn cooldown. So if you have Windwalker there and the skill is all the way skilled up, you're gonna have constant haste on your team, which means everyone's speed is, I think, boosted by like 50%. Um, oh, I just realized. On the Druid, I forgot to mention his third skill. His third skill is heal and regen effect for your whole team. So obviously it increases your sustain by a lot. Let's see, so then the next one, Popo. So Popo is the main damage dealer of the team. Uh, and you can see he's still, yeah, he needs one more skill up in this for the skill to be truly good. Uh, but if you don't know Popo really, he does damage based on bleeds, which are dots or damage over time. So his first skill, he attacks three times. Each time has a 35% chance to cause a bleed for one turn. So if you can get all three of them potentially to land, the next time they take a turn, you're potentially destroying 15% per... of their HP. So, if you can get all of his stuff to land, you could potentially make the boss fight incredibly short, which is awesome. So, the second skill, I have him on Jade Zen. This just prevents him from being, like, one-shot killed. I've had Popo be the last one in my boss's team tons of times, and because he had this skill on him, uh, the boss wasn't able to kill him. And he was able to sit there and like 1v1 the last like 30 or 40% of the boss's HP. Just because his bleeds would land and he was able to sit and survive it. Um, let's see. So, the third skill I have on him is Bamboo Grove. You don't have to have this skill. Uh, in all honesty, I was thinking about switching it to switching it back to Hidden Rage. But he doesn't have any skill ups in Hidden Rage, so. I swapped it over to Bamboo Grove for now. Um, so, Bamboo Grove is an AoE attack. Uh, it has an 85% chance to reduce the defense and cause them to bleed for two turns on everybody. So, it causes bleeds and a defense break, neither of which any other any other hero has on the team. So this one potentially 
it just speeds up like the trash waves like the first two wave well mainly the first wave but then also the second one a little bit because defense break uh and the defense break i mean it's useful on the boss but not necessary um it kind of just speeds up the boss fight a little that's pretty much it let's see so that's pretty much what Popo's here for. He's also the leader. Uh, it gives you an extra 33% defense to everybody, which is great. I wish it was an HP leader skill though, because you know they do throw out defense breaks. So a lot of this isn't necessary, uh, or a lot of this isn't being used when you have a defense break on you. That kind of sucks, but you know I didn't have an HP leader in any of my other things, so as it's just the best one out of them. Uh, let's see. Who is next? Who am I missing? Ah, yes. So next is Pharaoh. So Pharaoh is an interesting unit. Uh, I actually was unable to beat uh, Colossus E10 until I built my Pharaoh. So there's a reason behind that. So the Pharaoh uh, deals damage based on his max HP. He's a he's a tank unit. You can see I have a little over 60,000 HP on him. So his first skill is kind of a backup to spell for uh, for the druid's first skill. It's not as good, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, each time he attacks, he has a 35% chance to dispel, and he hits two times with every every time it goes. So it's an okay chance to dispel, but not as good as the druid, and you shouldn't be relying on his lens. But or uh, strip. But what he also does have is uh, preventing them from gaining new buffs for two turns. So whenever, you know, potentially cleanses, he also has the ability to throw that on there. And then that attack break that they're attempting to throw on the Colossus isn't actually landing on it, which is a great thing. Okay, so his second skill, his second skill, neither one of them really works that good for Colossus. So I, that's why I feel like there's probably a better a better unit to use than the Pharaoh, but I haven't built or found one. Um, actually, especially Magic Witch, I don't know. Anyway, so his second skill, he just gains Soul Guard, so if he dies, he revives with a certain amount of HP. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really pertain to Colossus, uh, at least the part above it where if it's killed, it can't be revived. That doesn't really matter that much in Colossus because he's not going to be the one dying. He is one of the tankiest characters out there, especially since he's HP and defense buffs don't work on HP units as well. But his third skill, his third skill is mostly what he's here for. His third skill uh, casts a shield on whoever has the lowest HP. Yeah, whoever has the lowest HP takes uh, it takes 20% of the Pharaoh's HP, uh, duplicates it, and then puts that on a shield on whoever has the lowest HP at the time. So if you have just the Pharaoh and a bunch of defense units, that's very good because HP-based shields on defense units will always be more powerful because the damage that they're taking like on that shield is still pertaining to their defense. So even if you potentially ignore defense on them, they'd still have a decent chunk of HP to kind of rely on. Sorry for that little ramble, but he's here to help sustain, help keep people from dying, especially the Windwalker, because I think she's split on defense and HP. Okay, but that's pretty much all that the Pharaoh's here for. He's here for a backup strip, uh, potentially putting, uh, preventing them from getting beneficial effects, and then more sustain with the shield. Um, and then my last one is my Flame Mantis. My Flame Mantis is probably the one I like the most, which is funny because he's probably ruined the worst. Yeah, you can see his hit's only at 29%. I want to get that up at least closer to 50. Um, and you can see one of his speed runes isn't even, isn't even all the way capped out. But he's here so that your whole team takes much less damage. Origin, I swear. I'm about to just delete it. Um, so... His first skill has a 100% chance, if it's all the way skilled up, to decrease the target's attack for one turn, which is great, because pretty much if he hits this lands, your team is automatically taking less damage from the Colossus, especially if 
this is potentially the attack that causes him to do his 50% attack. Mm. Let's see. So his second skill is uh, another single target, but this one has the ability to attack break and defense break them. Oh, so I guess we do have a defense break, sorry. Yeah, I'm definitely switching that off Popo then. Um, anyway, yeah, so you have the chance to reduce attack and defense for two turns, which once again, both things are amazing for the Colossus. That means you take less damage and he takes more. Uh, and then his third skill is an AOE attack break. So pretty much everyone, this is really good for kind of the, the trash wave, like the first wave and then kind of the second wave. Uh, so it decreases everyone's attack, or it has a chance to decrease everyone's attack and prevent them from gaining buffs for two turns. So kind of like the Pharaoh's first skill, how he prevents you from getting uh, the prevents you from getting beneficial effects. Sorry, I can't speak today for some reason. How his first skill will do that, the Flame Mantis's third skill will also do that. So it's very good to try to keep the attack break off the boss while also decreasing his attack or his his attack buff, keeping the attack buff off the boss while trying to put an attack break on him. So if you can get that and have that reliably land, your team will take so much less damage. Okay, so that's kind of the base of them. And I think pretty much all of them are sanctified. Okay. So, Flying Mantis is sanctified with Tenacious. It just means that when he gets the defense down, it doesn't do as much, uh, doesn't do as much defense break to him. So then, next is, where is he? Pharaoh. Pharaoh's robust, so it just increases his HP and reduces the final damage that he takes. And that will also stack with other damage reduction things. So if I were to throw in the monk with um, his third skill, that would also work. Let's see. Um, I, keep, I keep like kind of forgetting who I'm throwing in this, in a, this team for this video. Uh, so Popo is not sanctified. I think he's the only one that's not. Uh, once again, Windwalker on Robust, just to make her a little bit tankier and not die as easy, even though she still dies pretty easy because she's ruined wrong. If you're going into dungeons, don't look at my Windwalker. Like, if anything, have like two Windwalkers, two separate sets of runes, have one super fast for arena, and have another one a bit slower and just tanky, like just super tanky. Use that one for dungeons. That's my pro tip for you. Okay, so then Druid, we have Benevolent on him. It just increases his HP, and then increases the healing effects of everything, of all of his healing skills, which is good. Keeps your team from dying. So, having said all that, we're gonna go into Colossus. I'm gonna show you, hopefully, a successful run. If not, I'll just start over again. So we're gonna show you, hopefully, a successful run, and then I'm gonna go in and kinda show you what my team, like my usual team, is. And then kind of go through a couple other units that are traditional like dungeon units that you can pretty much use in any of the dungeons, but most specifically in this one. Also, yes, I am still on the floor. So thank you to, uh, I think it was uh, Cool Young for saying floor gang. Floor gang, oh. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. I thought my druid was about to die. I was going to be very sad. Okay. So, this first wave is pretty much almost beat. Another tip for this first stage, when there's mummies, you don't really have to worry about the mummies that much if you have your druid, because your druid's going to be able to heal fast enough and put a regen effect on that the mummies dots don't really matter. Like, dots are a great thing, but they should honestly only be used for, like, you know, dungeons. Because other players, like, you know, who can kind of sit and think about it, you can just get around them so easy. You can just get around dots so easy just by having heals or cleanses or anything like that. Come on, land your... Your hit is at 50%. Why do you never land? Oh my gosh. That was two times in a row he didn't land a single thing. So we're just going to target the center golem for this one. Watch, this is going to be the one time it doesn't work. Okay. 
Uh, but you can also see on the left side, so the Pharaoh has already put his shield on Popo. Which is great, because once again, Popo is a defense unit, doesn't have that high of HP. So having that HP boost makes him so much tankier than he would have been. It's so much more useful to have it be thrown on a defensive unit than on like an HP based unit. Okay. So we got an attack break, we got a... Uh, preventing them from gaining beneficial effects, a defense break, some dots. So we have pretty much everything from my lineup. The main problem with this team though is if you look, there's nothing in the way of the defense breaks on your team. So the main thing that you do with this team, or that I do with this team, or that I'm hoping for with this team, is you just kind of out turn cycle the, the defense breaks. Only problem with thinking about it that way though is it doesn't always work. If you're not always going to get it to work to where you're able to out turn cycle them. Okay. So once again, um, I, I kind of just know that the team's gonna win. He doesn't have the damage output to kill any of my units, or sorry, I should say kill all of my units now. Because I'm sure he could still potentially kill one of them. But yeah, the Colossus doesn't have the damage output. After, oh boy, he doesn't have the damage output after his like half wave attack to kill any of my units. So I really don't have to worry. I already knew that it was going to win. Okay, well, hey, that matched my uh, current best time with my other team. Wow, well, maybe I need to switch back. <laughs> maybe I need to switch back. Okay, so let's go in. I'm I'm gonna kind of show you guys. The team that I use more. So the team that I use, because I have a ton of fun five stars to use, so I use Elven Queen, uh, Druid, um, Popo Ollies, uh, Windwalker, and you. Is that everybody? I feel like that's everybody. Yeah, this feels like my normal team. Okay, do I have... I forget if I have an HP leader in this team. But so, the... Oops. So, this team kind of does the same things. Again, really. This team kind of does the same things. So, if you, if you just sit and look at it, we have shields from the Elven Queen. Uh, we have attack breaks from... Ironheart's second skill, which is an AoE attack break to everybody. We still have the Druid, we still have the Windwalker, and we still have Popo. So it's really just swapping in uh, Ironheart and Elven Queen. The only thing though is what kind of makes this team work is the skills that you use. So, on Druid, we would swap off of Thorn Guardian, and we would use Lightning Strike. We'd use Lightning Strike because on Ironheart, we are using Defensive Alert. So that means that those defense breaks that are on the Colossus don't matter as much anymore. Because this is blocking you from receiving defense breaks. Well, it will once I get two more skill ups. Yeah, two more skill ups into Ironheart. It, it's blocking you from having to deal with completely just one of the towers, if you can use him. So he automatically makes it better. Plus with his second attack having the attack break, amazing. So that's also why on the Druid we swapped off of this one because it also prevents you from getting defense buffs. So you swap off of the one that buffs defense and you switch to the one that silences. So you potentially take away his second skill, the Colossus second skill, which is a lot beefier than his first skill. Origin. So, and then Popo, for this team, I would probably leave it with Bamboo Grove. Uh, Elven Queen, we use Queen's Edict, so that gives a shield to everybody and increases their attack, so just kind of speeds it up a little bit. And then Elven Protection, which grants immunity and invincibility to everybody. So, a second thing in the way to prevent your team from getting those defense buffs. So that's pretty much all that I use but there are two units that I would suggest you use 
that could potentially make this better. Uh, I don't use them simply because I don't need to, and also because, well, I don't have one of them. The other one is not ruined well. So the first one is this vampire. This vampire is an amazing unit for, um, why can't I think? For dungeons. So on his first skill, you have a little bit of drain so that, you know, he kind of sustains himself a little. His second skill, uh, if he does critical strike, boosts all your allies' energy, which is kind of like the Demonic Swordsman. And then third skill, 80% uh, 80 chance to disable enemies passive for two turns and silence them for one turn. So, yes, it's a five turn cooldown or four turn once you get it all the way, but you can potentially silence everyone on the trash wave for one turn and get rid of their passives if they don't have them. And then on the on the Colossus, you could potentially have him silence for when he does his, when he would be dropped at 50%, and then that attack doesn't even matter anymore, because he's not going to use it. So great unit to use. Uh, if you have him, if you have him built, consider throwing your vampire on your team. Uh, the other one is Raft, the Necromancer. The Necromancer is another great dungeon unit, simply because of which third skill. Uh, this one. Immortal Aura. So, Immortal Aura means that every time he takes a turn, he cleanses a harmful effect off of everybody, except for Action Lock, which kind of stinks. But, so that means that every time he's taking a turn, he's going to cleanse off the defense buffs, or defense breaks, and your team will be able to survive a lot easier. That's pretty much the easiest thing. So, I think I'm actually going to sit and uh, try to craft him later today, at some point. Over. Yeah, I have plenty of those in stock. So yeah, I think I might grab him. Uh, once I do, I'll probably do a video on him. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it for Colossus V12. It's not. It's not that super hard to, to kind of wrap your head around. You really just need to deal with the boss having an attack break and your team having a defense break or attack buff defense break sorry keep saying it wrong you just kind of need to contend with those so the easiest things you can do is to attack break the boss to cleanse it off or just prevent him from getting beneficial effects for your team you can either cleanse it uh out turn cycle it kind of like i try to do um or defense buff your whole team, and then it's just like it didn't happen. So those are kind of the things that you need to do. Um, and kind of like with everything, this isn't a set team. This is not the only team that will work. Uh, you can swap in plenty of other heroes that I'm sure would also work, and I'm sure there are other people that have kind of different approaches to it. This is just kind of the beginner friendly way, and that's pretty much it. I'll just go real quick and show you the runes of them, because I realized I forgot to do that. I'm gonna go runes. So he's on uh, Agile Prayer, he's on Speed, uh, HP, and HP. So these are what his stats look like. For Windwalker, on Speed, Defense, Defense. Oh, she's not Defense, Defense, okay. And these are what the stats look like. Uh, sorry, uh, Swift Blessing. Next is Popo, who's on Berserk Focus, on Triple Defense. Oops, on triple defense. And these are what his stats look like. And then we have uh, the Pharaoh, who is on speed, HP, HP, on unity and agile. These are what his stats look like. And then we have the Flame Mantis, who is on agile blessing once again who's on speed, defense, defense, and these are what his stats look like. So, like I said, well, some of my units aren't runes the best, like I said. I don't have my best runes on most of these, so that's kind of why. But if you use your best runes, you're not going to have a problem clearing Colossus. It's not that hard of a dungeon to clear. Uh, it's mostly just a hard dungeon to kind of get a consistent team in. So, with that, I think that's pretty much all that I have for you guys. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I hope you all got something from it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.